Well, as a, as a young artist, I, I started just drawing mostly because uh, that's uh, how you could get attention. And like any psychologist will tell you, if you get attention from doing something, you'll continue to do it. This is where I get my material. Every time it rains, you can find, this is some kind of styrofoam. You'll find it all over here. Times are soft with a mouth to dress Breaking all the rules I'm going down, down for you um, If someone hasn't seen my work before, I tend to describe it as landscape painting, maybe contemporary landscape painting. So what I'll do is pick it all up and put it in my pocket and bring it back. Whenever I try to explain it to someone, it ends up getting uh, very long-winded and very confusing, and they usually just end. I usually just end up saying, oh, "That's landscape painting." <laughs> it's got to keep raining, otherwise I'll run out of supplies. Well, I use the styrofoam in my work to kind of symbolize this thing that's man-made but omnipresent in the landscape. So it's not very difficult to find this stuff everywhere you go. So sometimes I'll use a spatula to scrape the paint across the, the surface and let the, let the paint kind of act as, as paint and not appear so representational. I also like the way that it kind of scumbles along the surface. You were born into a strange world. Share the fire. I don't know where we come from. I don't know where we go. But my arms are made to hold you, so I will never let you go, cause you were born. So there's land here, and uh, in the in the center of this scene, I'm gonna create some type of industry that moves in and kind of starts is built upon that land. The stuff that's around this is gonna be more deliberate and organized because it's a, a city. So city planning is much different than you know, a natural prairie or a forest. I think of it as uh, experience and memory. So when I go out into a forest, I, I walk through the forest and I'm experiencing these vignettes moment by moment. And by vignettes, I mean, there's maybe you walk down a hill and you remember that moment of walking down the hill or you come across a, a pond and then you remember seeing that or spending the time there and then you move on to a new place. And you start to think about the, the ecosystem in, in general. It's just, it's overwhelming. It's impossible for one person to understand what's even going on in one foot of space in the forest and that complexity and that density has always been a part of my work to chase the light cuz you were born it's like you think that's just a city well no it's a uh... There used to be oak savanna there, and before the oak savanna, it used to be hunted by, you know, Dakota and Sioux, and before that, it's like the, the history of spaces we often forget about. This is nature, like dead nature, and then culture. So you've got coffee cups, styrofoam. It's like this is the, the perfect blending pot right here. This is like reality, what exists. I've got this type of framework established here, and the water works great because I can go and erase things. So like this area right here, if I spray that up close, you can see that like any paint that was still wet will start to fall away. And you get this uh, pattern of decay, and then having that actually happen on the surface of the painting always seemed interesting. to hold them, they need to dry like that. I think about what's represented two-dimensionally and sometimes try to create a complement to it three-dimensionally. This all started by, I, I made some paintings that had two or three sheets of paper on and I would go through and I would rip through them and then I'd start painting the next scene onto that as though it's like a, a moment in time and then you pass through the threshold of that moment into the next stage. The, the paint that 
dripped down would pool up inside of these like relief areas. I thought, okay, well that relief area then becomes a lake. Well, what, what's gonna happen around a lake? You're gonna get, uh, there's water there, so you're gonna have growth up around the lake. So it seemed like a, a rich place to kind of start putting the relief elements in, just having them, you know, stand there like that, because they can't. Because the paper comes out, in relief, then the objects can use that as a, a foothold to, uh, to start. It's like on the side of a cliff. Any rock that comes out, there's going to be something that's growing on there, whereas on the cliff face, it's much more rare. When I bring sculptural elements in, or like pieces from the land, uh, it, I have a tendency to think about modes of representation. You have an illusionistic space that's painted where people can go in with their mind. You have a space that actually comes out that people can move around with their body. And then you have these uh, like fake kind of uh, uh, model type materials that are produced on there. Um, trees that I make from sedum or like, you know, the architectural type of things. So I started fooling around with various plastic bags. The idea that you can take and make a, a, a form that looks like something natural out of something that's you know petroleum based and completely destructive and have that in this landscape that's kind of important because the landscape itself seems very picturesque but you know these are the things that we use on a daily basis that are the antithesis to this kind of idea all of these different modes of representation get introduced into the sculptural mix and it's kind of uh, left to the viewer to negotiate what those, how those things blend together. And if I just made beautiful paintings, what I'm trying to get at within the work would be lost. You know, so if I can introduce as much garbage as possible from the land into the work, uh, that kind of reflects on the state of land today, as well as making the painting a little bit more realistic to me. I want it to feel like I'm, I'm present in the land in general, you know, and it contains all of the thoughts that I have. I think that's how I, I want to just keep making it more and more uh, realistic in that sense. Uh, when I look at a landscape painting, I think that's like one twelfth of the story.